Hey, it's Tom Sinclair, your streaming idiot, coming to you from our studios live in Fairhope, Alabama. Of all places in the whole world, can anything good come out of Alabama? Well, yeah, we are down here right on the, uh, just about on the Gulf of Mexico and on the Bay of Mobile, also called the Bay of the Holy Spirit. And it's a gorgeous day down here in the south. It's about 76 degrees with blue skies, a couple little, a couple little puffy white clouds up there. Um, so if you're calling, if, if you're watching from where it's uh, cold and rainy or, or brutally hot or whatever, um, it would be nice to be here. You know, this would be a good place to be. The purpose of this show is, is to prove the concept that one guy with one PC and the right setup, we'll talk about that a little bit in a second, can really do a good broadcast. I want to welcome all of our YouTube viewers and our YouTube subscribers. I want to thank you. We hit our 1,500 subscriber mark this week. Really excited about that and, and humbled by it, too. I mean, that's it's really a great honor that so many of you would would think we have anything worth listening to more than once. <laughs> But, but we try hard. We do try hard. Me and my staff. My, my, my staff works very hard behind the scenes. <laughs> You're looking at the staff right here. Um, the, the idea is that, that you can take the video image out of a camera and you can dress it up like all this. And you can, you can send it out through the Internet to other people where they can watch it and hear it. It's just, it's astounding. So if you've got a passion for something, almost anything will work. I had a guy call me a while back that really loved the idea that you could physically make your own shoes. And he wanted to do an internet TV show about shoes because he knew that there was an audience out there. Now, there wouldn't be an audience in his small town, maybe not even in his little geographical area or even his state. But once you get past those borders, I mean, the internet doesn't have any, I guess, China is a border. <laughs> they may not get this show in China or North Korea. But outside of some exceptions like that, folks all over the world who have an interest in what you have an interest in can tune in. And I'll share some tips with you on how to get them to tune in with you in just a minute. But the idea is that you can take the video image with the right PC and, and software set up and, and, and bring it all the way through and dress it up like this and, and make it work. It's really a fun. Now today, today's setup, my setup kind of varies from week to week. So I, I generally try to make a mention on each show as, as to what the setup. Today's setup is being broadcast to you if you're watching live at 720p, which is the, the 720 is, is the is the height 720 pixels high and p is not for pixels p is for progressive which means you see a full frame instead of i which would mean you'd see half a frame and then the other half of the frame and you wouldn't really know it because it would come that quickly but 720p at 30 frames a second and we are we are broadcasting the bit rate is 2.5 mbps for the video and i think it's 38 uh 128k for the audio. The audio is coming through a, a Behringer X1204 USB mixer um, and it's a, uh, an, a what is it? Audio Technica AT897 uh, shotgun mic that's just right out of the picture right up here. So I don't, you see I'm not wearing a lav mic or anything like that. Um, and I don't have a big mic hanging out in, in front of me with a big, big spittoon on the front of it or whatever you call those things. Um, and that's, that's the audio setup. The video setup's really pretty simple. Oh, golly, it's so simple. It's, it's an old cast-off Canon Vixia HF R100 Handycam mounted on a tripod and uh, hooked up HDMI. Today, it's to a Blackmagic Intensity Pro card. Sometimes we'll use the Magewell cards. Um, we're a representative for Magewell here in the U.S., and oh yeah, full disclosure, we represent Magewell and we represent uh, PTZ uh, optics on the PTZ cams. We represent vMix and VidBlaster. Um, and we just signed up uh, Camtasia. So if you're interested in screen capture software, uh, 
we'll be adding Camtasia to our, our website here shortly. Um, we've been developing a, um, a four-port uh, HD 1080p capture device that plugs into a laptop Thunderbolt, or if you've got a Thunderbolt on your desktop, it'll do that too, but we're thinking it would be a, a very cool thing to have a way to take a laptop out to a basketball game and have four HD cameras come into it. That would be really cool. So we've just about that, got that ready for release. We'll be putting that in our website uh, before too long. Anyway, um, the setup today, we're, we're, we're streaming and recording in, with vMix. So we're recording 1080p and we're streaming 720p, but we're also streaming 180p. And you say 180p? That's teeny. That's just like that big. Well, it's that big because it's perfect for this device. No sense burning up all your bandwidth if you've got a data plan and you're watching us on the train or plane or, or automobile. Well, you better not be watching us on the plane, but you know what I mean. Well, I guess you get data on planes. And we don't want to burn up all your bandwidth. So we're, we're being very conservative on your behalf and sending out a smaller stream a uh, bit rate of uh, 300, I think, video and maybe 64 audio. So you can watch us. If you want to watch us live, you can do that. If you're watching us later on YouTube, you have a choice in YouTube of whatever resolution YouTube has decided to re-encode this video in. We're sending the 1080p to them, and they're re-encoding it, and they're producing 720 and 480 and 360 and... Um, maybe one, uh, 240 and 144, I think, are sort of the standard offerings. So depending on what you're watching with, you can pick the, the band, band rate, uh, the bit rate, excuse me, the size, and, and thus the bit rate that's appropriate for you. But we're trying to help you out on the front end, too. So I think you'll see a lot, of more, a lot more folks that uh, don't have the ability to do adaptive bit rate streaming that will send out multiple streams so that folks... Uh, especially if they're paying with, for their own bandwidth. Uh, today, you know, we're using DACAST, D-A-C-A-S-T, DACAST.com, out in San Francisco here in the U.S. They're out of, I think, France originally. And they are our streaming partner. Uh, we pay $25 a month, and they give us, I don't know, a ton of data, a ton of bandwidth, more than we, we really use. And whatever we don't use rolls over to the next month. And the idea is that every time you and I, every time you watch live on this show, I'm sending you a let's say just say a 720p feed. So if there are a thousand people watching, I'm sending 1,000 720p feeds. But if you have an iPhone, well, you might rather not get a 720p feed. Or if you have a slower, you know, an old DSL. Um, internet connection. You might rather not get a 720p feed because it would probably buffer a lot. It would be unpleasant, uncomfortable to watch. So you could switch over to the 180p feed and have a so-so eh, video, pretty decent audio, but you would still be able to watch the show live. And on my end, I would save on the bandwidth. So instead of sending out 720, I'd send out 180. You do the math, that's probably, I don't know, a 60-75% savings on bandwidth. So if you're paying for your own bandwidth, it makes sense to give your users some choices as to what resolution to watch because most folks will pick the resolution. If they know they can, they'll pick the resolution that's best for them. and Or they may not watch at all. So just something to consider. So that's the setup today. Not, not real complicated, but it's sort of the the uh, compilation of, you know, a couple of years worth of doing these kind of shows and trying to find the sweet spot. I think we've, I think we've pretty well hit the sweet spot. Today I want to talk about a couple of things, but I, I can't help. I'm so excited. And you'd say, Tom, why do you get excited about some of the dumbest stuff? <laughs> That's true. That's true. But I have been looking, I have been planning this. Let me get it together, and I, I want, actually, I need to take it apart so I can show it to you part by part. But I have been planning this in my brain for probably a year or more, maybe, maybe more like two years. And just recently, in the last couple of, I'd say in the last week or 10 days, decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and 
by what it is I've, I've been wanting all along. And this is what I've been wanting all along. Yeah. This is an adapter. And it has a female on one end, and it has a male on one end. No jokes in the chat room now. You guys keep it clean. And it's a, um, a 3 8 inch female, um, and it's a 3 8 16 and 16 has to do with the, the thread uh, width. It's not a very fine thread. It's a pretty coarse thread. It's probably 16 threads per inch or something like that. Um, and it connects on the other end to a quarter inch, 20 thread count, male. So it's 3 8 16 female to quarter inch, 20 male. What does that fit? Well, for all you camera guys out there, you know that the quarter inch will fit into a camera. So it screws right into the camera and you've got an adapter for the cam. And this is the exciting part. Hold your breath. No, I'm teasing. The, uh, a, a microphone boom arm like this one happens to have a 3 8 inch 16 thread on the end of it in order to take the microphone holder. So if you were doing a mic overhead, which is what I've got overhead here, um, you would get this. And a lot of times this whole setup will come with the XLR cable already built in. But I didn't want that because I'm not doing XLR, I'm doing HDMI. And so I have got, with this little adapter, the adapter came from BH, b &H, um, Photo, and I think was about three bucks. The, uh, Martin says in the chat room that the larger thread, the 3 8 is what they call the Whitworth thread, W I. W-H-I-T-W-O-R-T-H, the Whitworth thread. And that would be the mic thread, so all you musicians know about that. And then the camera guys know about the other one. Um, so we would put it together like that. Very inelegant at this point. That's okay. And so we're going to end up with the ability to mount this here on my, on my broadcast production desk and I can place my camera lots of different ways and I think this is going to be a lot easier to manage than a tripod and I'm not going to have to give up floor space for this so I can put this cam in fact it, what I imagine really is an array of these uh, one as a, as a main cam and then maybe one off to the right that's pointing down on the desktop to show what's going on here or one off to the left that's looking at the monitors here. And so I think this is going to be a neat little setup. And I've been promising for a while a studio tour. And so we'll probably end up doing that sometime soon. Once we get this again, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to mount this uh, by, by mounting. Where's the little adapter here? It came with a rather useless uh, pressure adapter that's supposed to mount um, on the desktop, but this particular work surface that I have has a, uh, a corner panel that's like that big, and so this little guy is not going to be able to, to grab into to something like, like that. So I'm going to have to modify this so I can permanently mount it on the desktop, but we'll, we'll work that out. And I should have thought about that before I ordered this. So if you're ordering it, think about are you going to are you going to mount it i mean the the uh, this mouth is probably going to open maybe two inches maybe two and a quarter something like that so if whatever you're mounting to is exceeds that this is not going to help you you're going to want something like this that is a fixed mount i happen to steal this from somewhere else in the house unfortunately it's little hole right there is a little too big for the uh the base on the swing arm, so I probably won't. Use, I'll probably put this back where it belonged. Anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, 
And Martin says that uh, an old Imperial thread type, still one of the standards for mic stands and the higher end camera tripod head mounts. Okay, so that would be the 3 8 width worth thread that he's talking about. Very good. So if you're looking for something that's an adapter, and here, let me get the little spec sheet out on it. The wrapper says adapter 3 8 inch dash 16 F to the word to T-O, uh, one quarter inch dash 20 M for male. Okay, so that's cool. So if you're building a studio, that's a great way to put a camera close by without having to use a tripod. Justin, if you're watching this, you might enjoy this one. Um, and so it will be, uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, Kent's here. Welcome, Kent. Glad you're here. So that's the tripod uh, killer there. We'll get uh, this installed and let you guys have a look at it next week or subsequent weeks. The other thing I wanted to talk about that I think is going to be fun and cool also is a part of vMix called the Web Controller. And what the Web Controller is, as you can guess from the terminology Web Controller, that you can be out on the interweb somewhere. Well, let me rephrase that, but I'll rephrase it just to make it. You can be out on the interweb somewhere, somewhere in your own little network, and be able to control vMix. And it's really pretty cool. So um, let's do a, uh, we've got a desktop capture here. And let me throw it up into preview, and I'll throw it up into program. So pay no attention to the fact that the guy over there is like going into infinity. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to come down to the bottom. You see my mouse there at the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to come down to view shortcuts. And this will bring up, which essentially is the web controller right here. Um, and if I clicked web controller there, it would bring up a web controller in my browser. Um, but we're going to bypass that for just a second. I just want to come over here to edit. And so we're going to be editing shortcuts. And you can see that I've got two shortcuts set up. I've got the main shot, which is this shot right here. And then I've got the Tom chat shot, which is the shot that you saw if you were watching in pre-show. And I'm allowing it to cut in a half a second to that shot. So let me just cancel out of this for a second. And I've got that set up as F5 and F6 on my keyboard. So if I do F5, it's going to bring this shot over there. There we go. And if I do F6, it's going to bring back my pre-show shot, which is this one right there. So I've got both of these shots, F5 and F6, set up on the keyboard to cut. So it doesn't matter. I don't need preview. I already have this shot built the way I want with the lower third and the website, easternshorebroadcasting.com, right here. And, of course, that really cool background that Charles sent me. Thank you, Charles. Great job. Um, and so back and forth, F6, F5, I'm cutting. I'm going straight to it. And when you've got a lot of cameras or inputs or whatever it is you're using, you don't have time to throw everything into preview in order to see it, especially in sports. You need to go, boom. That's why in sports you have a, a, a fixed control surface that allows you to cut straight to the shots that you want to cut to. Um, so having set that up already, I'm doing it with my physical keyboard here. And, uh, oh, what the heck. I'll show you how awful it looks. This is my desktop right here. Pay no attention to the clutter. But here's my keyboard. So I'm going to press F5 right there, and pow, we're going to get that one. I'll go back to the keyboard, and I'm going to press F6, and we get that shot. So that's pretty cool. If I had been thinking about it, I would have set up this shot as F7. Actually, let's do that. It won't take us but just a second. So let me cut back to this weird shot right here, and I'm going to put me in preview right there because I'm better looking than the desktop. So we'll go to View Shortcuts, Edit, and we're going to add a shortcut. We're going to make this one on the keyboard. We're going to make it F7. And we can use the Nano Control, too, but I don't have it set up in the right place right now. So we'll say we're going to use a function, and we've got all different kinds of functions we can do right here. But we're in the All setting, and we know that we want the Cut. So we'll just select Cut. 
duration we'll leave it half a second that's good and the input is going to be uh, our overhead shot which is one of these Logitechs oh golly which one is it well let's just guess let's see if it's the 29 and we're not going to put a title in it right now so there it is right F7 Logitech 29 we'll say OK and if we hit F7 yeah that's the right one all right let's let's go back to where we were right there we'll go back into the shortcuts and we're just going to give that one a title we're going to edit it and right up here where it says title we're going to say desktop and this is going to be oh the C920 whoops don't have all enough room for that so we'll say we'll take out the there we go, C920. We need a couple more characters there, but I'll show you in just a minute why you don't want a whole lot there. Oh, we'll do one other thing there while we're going. We will make this a local shortcut. That is, for the preset that I'm using today, which is my November 4th, 2015 preset for this show, um, this, this shortcut will just go with this show. Okay, so we got that one set up. And you notice now it's highlighted um, because we have given it a title. And it tells us the input is the HD Pro Webcam 920. I've actually got two of them attached. So we had a 50-50 shot of getting it right. So if I press F7 now, it should go to our overhead shot. F6 will take us back to, oops, wrong finger. F6 will take us back to this shot. F5 to that shot. F7 back to that shot. Okay, so we've got all that done. I'm going to go back, let's see, let's go back to the uh, desktop capture shot and we'll bring up our shortcuts. And so we have three shortcuts that are set up right now. And they're also set up in the web controller. Let's talk a little bit about web controller from a different angle. We're going to go into settings here in the top right hand corner. And we're going to swing down in this left column to web controller and here it's going to tell us what the website address is for the web controller and you can see I've enabled it right there and our website address is and this is on my network so you can't use this code and take over my show at least I don't think you can uh, http colon slash slash 192.168.1.117 colon 8088 8088. And it says, tip, the website address above can be used to control vMix from any device on the same network, including Android, iPad, Surface, and mobile phones. Simply type it into a browser on that device. Couldn't be any simpler, right? Well, let's see. Let's, uh, let's use F7, and we'll go to our desktop shot, and we'll bring up a phone. So let's see what we've got in this phone. And I've got some messages there. Oh, and looks like I had this configured previously. You see I've got two different choices there, so I'm just going to refresh the browser window there. And now I've got three choices. And if I change the orientation of my phone, it'll change as well. So now I can go to the main shot. I can go to the chat shot. I can go to the desktop shot. And I'm just tapping that on my phone. Isn't that cool? I can do the same thing with my tab. Both of these are Android devices. I'm not an iPhone user, although my wife is, and I've tested it on hers. So let me, uh, let's just refresh this shot. And that should bring, yeah, that brings in the third shortcut. So we can go to, bring it up a little bit so you can see better. We can go to the main shot. We can go back to the desktop. We can go to the chat shot back to the desktop and you see it's pretty snappy pretty snappy now there are some other whoops that lights right in the way isn't it uh, there are some other options right up here right now we're on the web controller option there's another control another option there that kind of brings up a, a more traditional uh, switcher option and then there's also um, something that allows us to uh, 
to, t to put tally lights on for any number of things and then uh, allows us to change the text on these, but we're not going to use those right now. We're just going to use those. And, and these are available. Now keep in mind, this has to be done on your network. You can't do this remotely from a, a different network. So you can't go across the street to your neighbor's house and get on his network and, and be able to, to change cams. But as long as you're within the same network, um, obviously, these are working on the wireless network that I've got set up here at, uh, at my studio. Um, the PC that's streaming this is, is on a hard wire, but they're all uh, uh, essentially connected to the same router, which means they're on the same network. So I can go back to the main shot, and I can use either one of these to, shot, to change to the shot I want. Um, that's the web controller. That's really cool. So you can set up um, the web controller to, I mean, you can set it up and give it to somebody else across the room to do the camera switching, and, and they don't have to have the PC in front of them. Let me show you one other thing with the shortcuts, because the web controller is essentially a shortcut feature. Um, and let's go into that desktop one right there. So we'll select it, and then we'll edit it. Um, and we've got an option. I don't, I don't know if you can see this very Oh, you can't see it at all. Let's go back to this shot right here. Sorry about that. So we're going to go to Shortcuts. We're going to go to Edit. And let's edit Shortcut F7, which is our desktop view from the C920. So we'll edit that. And down here at the bottom, you can see where it says Show in Web Controller. So if I don't want my assistant to have the ability to control a specific part, I can just uncheck this, and now the web controller won't show that particular option. So we'll say OK, and let's go back to the desktop, and we'll fire up one of these guys, and we'll refresh it. Of course, we're going to have to refresh it. And now you see only two options are there. I can go back to the chat room. I can go back to the main shot. But I don't have right now the option to go back to this shot because it wasn't an option. Now I can still do it from the desktop. I can still use the keyboards here. It was just the web controller that I can't do that with. So web controller, no. Keyboard, yes. Really pretty cool. That is how to use the web. That's the quick and dirty with the web controller. Now, the real, the real power of it comes when you set up the shortcuts. Because you can set up shortcuts for tens of different tens, for dozens of different things. We've got the ability, and let's just say we're going to use the A key for a second. We've got the ability to set up almost every function in vMix as a shortcut. And it's not something where we have to type in and get the syntax right, and if we're off by a letter if, or if our punctuation in the syntax string is not right, it won't work. It's all programmed in here for us. So we can, uh, we can set up audio parts, we can set up video parts, we can set up outputs, and by using the tabs here on the left, we can get a subset of all the available functions that have to do just with, for example, titles. If you want to do just titles, there it is. If you want to do just inputs, there are your inputs. If you want to do instant replay, oh, you've got a ton of options with instant replay. Audio, you've got some, not as, not as many. Transition, not even that, that few. Um, so the, the advantage of shortcuts is that uh, you've got the ability to have them already kind of pre-programmed uh, pre for you. And then all of your inputs that you want to use here, you can select those inputs. And then now I can make it a local shortcut. That is, it's only with this preset that I've got done of all these inputs down here below. Um, and I can either have it show or not show in the web controller. Now, I'm not going to show this one. I save that one because it's essentially junk. But you get the idea. You get the idea. Welcome, Rudy. Glad you could make it. Okay, so let's see. So let's use, uh, we'll go back to this one, 
and you can see what a slob I am on the desktop and we'll go back to the main shot main shot pretty cool stuff huh I think that's pretty neat it's it's well thought out it's easy to use it's practically instantaneous it works on almost any device that you can throw at it and it uh, it will give a lot of flexibility for example let's say that you are um, you're doing a you're doing a presentation to a large group of people and you're and you're live streaming it and it's just you you don't have other people to to do your work for you you could set up the web controller to control either what people at home were seeing if you're streaming it or even what would ha be displaying on other boards around you um, by having the web controller properly configured and you could even set up a monitor at the back of the room that showed you uh, what the active, uh, what, the, what the program window or the main shot, the main output was at the time. So there are lots of ways to configure that. The beauty of this kind of cool software, whether it's really, whether it's VidBlaster or, or Wirecast or vMix, and today's we're talking about vMix, is that it's like a, a big box of Legos. You know, those neat little blocks that you can put together. Kids love them. And if, if I give you a, a box of Legos and say, here, make something and give you 10 minutes, well, you might can make a car or a cart or a fort. But uh, if I give you a box of Legos today and give you an hour and then give you another box tomorrow, and then after six months of an hour a day, you're not making cars and carts and forts anymore. You're creating all sorts of intricate different designs and functions and things that move and flap and these softwares are the same way. The more you get to know them, the more you can find, oh, well, if I put this together with a little bit of that, this is going to happen. And that's the beauty of it. A lot of it, frankly, a lot of it is things that the designers of the software didn't always <laughs> intend. <laughs> but it's the users that get in and say, you know, we can add a little bit of this and a little bit of that and, and get this great thing. If you want to find out more about vMix, um, you can go to vmix.com. If you're interested in purchasing vmix, you can go to my website, easternshorebroadcasting.com, and, uh, and make the purchase there. If you've got a version, an old version you want to update it, we can help you with updates too. Um, also, oh yeah, one other thing that I would be remiss if I didn't, didn't mention, and that is that um, we have got a, a special that just started in our um, in our website, let's see if I can pull it up here without being too fancy schmancy. Um, yeah, well, you can't really see all of it, but it's here in the top right-hand corner of the website. Can we can we make that bigger? No, that didn't help, did it? Okay, well, boy, we didn't plan this very well. <laughs> but right up here in the top right-hand corner of the website is the special for the next two weeks, which is the uh, Pro Capture Quad HD SDI by Magewell. It's, uh, it's a high-end capture card for folks that have SDI cameras, and it is really sweet. It, as you can see, it's got a built-in fan, which keeps it cool. It cap captures four channels simultaneously of 3D HD SDI uh, all the way up to 1080p. Um, Actually, it goes more than 1080p, but the 1080p would be what we would use it for here in the States. Um, and it is, it's pretty spectacular in its performance. Uh, we've built several, several custom PCs using this card and the previous version of this card, and they are, they are working, I would say they're working flawlessly. So we're really pleased with that. It, the, uh, the special is, it's, it retails at $899, but if you use the, uh, the, the promo code MW, and that's for Magewell, PC SDI, you can get a discount. And I, I'm not allowed to tell you what the discount is, but it'll be there. All you have to do is, and if you just want to find out, go put it in your cart and then try to check out, but don't pay anything, obviously, and you can find out what the discount is. Um, but I can't tell you what it is. Magewell made me promise. I can give you the discount. I just can't tell you about the discount. So go to easternshorebroadcasting.com and, uh, and you can find out more about it. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. And we're, we're going to try to, um, 
as, as we're bringing our store online, try to always have kind of a little special there. So if you've got something that you say, oh boy, you know, Tom, I wish you would put this as a special sometime. Shoot me an email, Tom at easternshorebroadcasting.com and, uh, you know, we'll probably do it. <laughs> Why not? It's fun. And that way you can get the stuff that you want to play with because it's nice to have the right tools for the job. It really is. It makes all the difference in the world when things operate smoothly. I had a quick little war story here. I know we've gone over time. I apologize. But I had somebody call me um, yesterday, and they were talking about the setup that they'd been using to do a sporting event. And it was probably something that started out small, and then they added to it and added to it and added to it. But they started with the wrong, I think, in my opinion, the wrong concept. And so when you start off on the wrong foot and you add to it, you get more of the same. And so they ended up taking, you know, a high-end video, sending it through a device that converted it to RCA, which means composite. Yeah, composite, that is standard definition. And then into a PC uh, via HDMI, which I think meant high definition. Um, so they were, they were, you know, they were kind of cheating themselves, but that's, that's the way they started. And they were continuing to expand on that. And then finally somebody new came in and said, ah, there might be a better way to do this. Let me see if I can't find somebody. And so they ended up calling us and that's great. And so if, if you're in a situation where you're, you've got a video set up and you're not really sure if you've got, number one, you're not sure if you've got it right, or number two, you know, you don't have it right, but you can't figure out what you need, you need to do next, give me a call. I'm not interested in selling you a bunch of stuff. I just want to help you get the right thing for you. And if it means that I get to sell you something, great. If not, hey, you can recommend me to the next guy. And that's the way we want to work it. So I have to breathe now. <laughs> Coming to the end of the show. Yep, we had to come to the end of the show eventually. And uh, let me get queued up everything here so that I can do this right because this show opening and closing is just always seems to be my Achilles heel. Thank you for watching today. I really appreciate all the folks that, that tuned in live and uh, all of you that are watching on YouTube. If you haven't already, the fact that you've made it all the way to the end of this video means you probably need to subscribe. <laughs> if you've gotten all the way to this point, uh, then you probably would be interested in some of the other things that both we've, we've already got on our YouTube channel and broadcasts that we have up to come, we're, uh, coming up, excuse me. We have, we're live every Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern, except for notable holidays. Coming up uh, next week, we're going to be looking into the scoreboard feature in vMix. Uh, coming up uh, probably not next week. We're, we're not sure quite yet, but, but within the next three or four weeks will be Tracy Goodwin. You remember Tracy is the red sweater lady that talks about how to improve your audio presentation. And then our good friend Alan Bunt uh, with Good Shepherd Lutheran Church who's doing, oh man, Alan has built the sweetest new PC and he's cramming it with capture cards and doing all sorts of great things with VidBlaster and macros. And he's about got it to the point where he's ready to, to show it off. So we're going to bring Alan on the show and, uh, and let him show off that too. So that's going to be fun. We've got a lot of great shows coming up. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Sinclair, the streaming idiot. Coming to you from Eastern Shore Broadcasting. We'll see you next time. Take care.